what you're saying is you go from releasing dubstep to house music or to techno. That is a huge turnaround. That's like chalk it's and cheese. It's a completely different aesthetic, right? It's that's the thing, and and it was largely, it was largely sort of fired by my desire to not play at those parties anymore because okay. that, that's the difference right why that, though what what were they what was going on at those parties that, that was like i do not want to be part of this rewinds <laughs> rewinds you know it's just this kind of arms race for the rewind yeah just fuck man like i just want to play for four hours and not be bothered by you know not have that kind of pressure every three minutes to deliver some enormous drop and um that was just where I was with it, you know, and I just wanted to. Was that always was... there, though? Sorry to butt in, but was that always there, or was that when the more Americanized dubstep kind of started to take over? And because I, I, I'll be honest, dub dubstep was never for me. I grew up in Bristol, so dubstep was always around me, but I was mm -hmm. the person that would always refuse to listen to it at the time because everyone else was listening to it. So it was never like on my radar. I never really went to many dubstep kind of parties. Hmm. Well, I mean, the early dubstep scene was genuinely a thing of beauty. Yeah. It was just an amazing sort of little community of people. And it sort of, um, it led to, it kind of sprouted up similar little things in various places around the world in a way, which is kind of quite unique actually. But unfortunately, uh, we all know what happened with the music, right? <laughs> and it's, uh, it wasn't, you know, I <laughs> I have sometimes you know, blamed the North Americans in a slightly tongue in cheek kind of a way, but it's a little bit unfair because, you know, the kind of, the rewind mentality, um, it just comes with big parties, right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as you have a big room full of people and they're, most, and they're mostly interested in when the next bass drop is going to happen, that that will just you know that that kind of mentality will just develop i think yeah naturally so so it wasn't just skrillex you know it wasn't just those <laughs> guys although they did kind of turn up the volume quite significantly on that kind of stuff but you know i was well out of it by then i think certainly mentally checked out of it but i mean like i said like the initial i mean you know i was at the you know went to the very first forward in 2001 you know we did our first release in 2003 and you know the Marianne Hobbs show wasn't until 2006 so there was a pretty long mm. period of standing in a room once a month because forward was once a month back, once a month back then with 30 guys and two girls and swapping CDs <laughs> and it just being the best thing ever you know it yeah. sounds so shit but it was genuinely the best thing ever and you can't recreate that you know like either you're there or you're not and it's difficult to keep it going as well. And as soon as it is exposed to loads more people, it's something is immediately lost. And and you know the watching the process of it become popular was genuinely amazing. Like the DMZ first birthday uh, was just a mind blowing night. I'll never forget it. It was just insane. And yeah, it was the culmination of like yeah, like I said, five years of standing in a room expecting nothing ever to happen. But you know it was always a question of like, well, what happens next now? And, um, you know, <laughs> it was probably quite predictable in, in reality. Yeah. But, you know, me moving to Berlin was a kind of an anticipation of that, I suppose. I mean, I was, I was very much kind of checked out of the whole thing, wanted to do something different. Um, and it, you know, I moved, to, moved over in 2007 and we didn't do our <laughs> pivot to house until 2011, 2012. So yeah, there was a few years of um, trying to plow a furrow in that would make it, uh, keep the kind of original vibe for want of a better term and make it cool. But, and, and the, you know, that, that period was cool actually, as there was some really interesting music made that wasn't that kind of rewind chasing bullshit. Uh, but, you know, everything has its shelf life, I guess, you know, and Agreed. I think like, you know, the, the, the house thing, which happened, the UK house thing that happened in kind of 2011, 12, 13, it was just fun, yeah. you know, and I think that was the difference. I think the people that were involved in post dubstep that kind of stuff were just ready to have some fun and make some money, quite frankly. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, and that was it. I guess 
when you, as an artist, when you decide to go from dubstep to house or techno, how does that affect you financially? Well, I was living in Berlin and paying 300 euros a month rent. So there was not a massive financial <laughs> yeah. pressure to do much. But having said that, um, we had had some pretty successful releases on the label and we had a good catalogue and it was ticking over. Um, like dubstep is um, bass music generally drum and bass included is not well paid comparatively speaking dj wise so um my i, I would I, this wasn't it wasn't a, definitely wasn't a primary motivation i mean I, I kind of said that in a kind of glib kind of a way but it, it it wasn't anything like the forefront of my mind i mean i'd been able to make a good living at that point for a few years uh from from djing and from selling music and I was sort of aware that, you know, house DJs got paid more, but not, I mean, it wasn't like, fuck, I need some of that house paper. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a, you know, I, I, let's try and do this. It will be fun. I don't have a mortgage or anything like, you know, I don't have any, I don't have a family. You know, it was like, you know, I was, I guess, 28 or something. And it was, you know, just a, a shot in the dark really without thinking too much about it i mean that's been, my whole career has really been a succession of shots in the dark <laughs> but i mean it, it definitely wasn't something i was thinking too hard about um but then you realize fuck you know there's there is real money to be made yeah. here which is great I and mean, you know that's fine that's absolutely fine i mean people are sniffy about money and music but you know if you have the opportunity if you have the opportunity to get paid proper money to play music which you can genuinely stand behind i think that's that's the problem is where people do stuff which is when it's just for the money you know fuck that but if you can if your artistic vision coincides with getting paid a lot of money then great fucking go cool. go get the bank absolutely yeah it's it's a weird concept it's weird that people are weird about money in the music industry <laughs> I mean, certain parts of it. Yeah, certain parts of it are more than happy for extreme financial success. But certainly in, in dance music, it's it's a little bit. Well, I think that's what I, you know. Going back to what I said about how dance music is is a very much of a backwards looking, mostly cons conservative kind of a scene. Like there is still sort of the concept of of selling out. It's still in people's totally. minds to extent. I mean, it, it's definitely not what it once was. And it, it um, manifests in different ways, but I think that slight sniff, not sniffiness, I don't know what the right word is, um, that kind of, the sort of reluctance to embrace that as an aesthetic, like wealth, I mean, in the way it is in hip hop, for example, yeah, you know, that's just not there at all. And I think it's, it's basically because people have that kind of, um, that they're looking back to that 90s period even if it's subconsciously um and it just doesn't fit in with that aesthetic at all mm. you know I mean, even the um even the private jet stuff you know <laughs> don't even get me is, started on that yeah I, I i totally agree um but even that stuff is a little bit it's it's muted it's you know what i mean it's like i mean obviously there are certain except exceptions to that but like it's not um it's not what it yeah it's not as bad as it could be i think it's so like i said when you compare it to hip-hop it's it's nothing right yeah I mean, no, no one's like throwing blocks of hundred dollar bills around or anything like that oh yeah give it time give it time